Welcome back. Our next guest is a best-selling author, and her new book is about her own midlife crisis. Yep, she created a bucket list and did just about everything from attempting a juice cleanse and studying Italian to training for a 5K and even starting a business. Jen Lancaster has a very irreverent sense of humor, I think, and is on full display in this. It's called I Regret Nothing. She also has lost an incredible amount of weight, and she blogged about that, too, so we're excited to welcome you back and see you again. Good to see you. You had a little... Um, setback though with working out and you blew your Achilles, right? I blew my Achilles coming home from the opera, sober of all <laughs> things. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, had, I was down 50 pounds already. I was ready to kick it into gear with my gym's biggest loser program. I got one week of good exercise in, and then I ruptured the Achilles, and th I had to have surgery. But I was... I was so motivated and I had already learned so much that instead of actually gaining weight during the rupture, I lost almost another 20 pounds. That is awesome, John. Congratulations Thank you. on that. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So tell us, first of all, about this great book, um, I Regret Nothing, that I think is going to be a perfect read for people this summer. Thank you. I, I think it's it's lively and it's funny and it's it might not be the book you want to read when you're on a plane next to someone because you're going to be laughing out loud, out loud. and snorting. Yeah. At, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. This came about, um, the, my last book was The Tao of Martha, and that was where I spent a year of my life trying to live by Martha Stewart's dictates. They kept me very much in my house. So by the time that book was over, my husband just wanted me to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So when this girl's trip to Savannah came up, I was like, oh, I kind of want to put travertine in the office bathroom. <laughs> and he said, go on this trip. I guarantee you won't regret it. So I went on this trip, and an incident happened with my college best friend that was so spectacular. I will not spoil it. It was so oh. spectacular that I thought I need to have a bucket list specifically so I can cross this item off. And that really started me thinking about the whole idea of bucket lists and not having so you regrets. Didn't have one before you no, started. I never did. Yeah. But I mean, I'm a member of Generation X. We're starting to turn 50. We're kind of at the halfway point. And the thought was, if not now, then when? When, right. Mm -hmm. What's the craziest thing that was on your bucket list, in your opinion? Crazy is not really how you would okay. typify me because I'm not jumping out of airplanes. I mean, I, I had trouble coming home from the opera, like I said. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not running with bulls. I think the best thing, the most exciting thing was to travel to Italy by myself. My husband did come halfway, but I went... I spent a year learning the language, and when I went to Italy, I was ready to communicate. I was ready to, to speak Italian, and everyone spoke English to me. <laughs> I, I had the same I had the same situation when I went to Spain, and I was I practiced everything I could say. And the one thing and I don't remember how to say this anymore was how to say, "Can I have my fish without a head on it?" <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up doing. I was saying something really rude, and and people thought that was just hilarious. Did you have any experiences like that with waiters or in restaurants? Well, well, I, I learned the hard way that apparently ordering a cappuccino after 5 p.m. is like painting a Speedo on the David. It's just, <laughs> it's, they're just <laughs> disgusted. They're disgusted with you. Really? That's what bothers you? And I, I mean, I was so prepared. I learned all of these little phrases because I thought that, um, that I would be attacked by pickpockets. I mean, I've been to every major city in the country on book tour, but I don't know why I thought Rome would be so much scarier. So I learned how to say things in Italian like, I'm an American, so I have a gun. <laughs> but I would say it in a really low menacing tone so they would know that I meant business. I didn't have to do that. Good it was for you. fine. That's it good. was fine. A good thing to practice in front of the mirror, though. It, One of the things that I thought was interesting about your book is that you write about your visit to the morning blend. Yes. In one of the, it, it starts out one of the chapters and being on live television and how you live closer. It's almost easier to get to Milwaukee than oh, Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one of the things that you write about, I think very accurately, but it's also very funny, is how the camera adds, you know, people say 10 oh, yeah. pounds. 20 pounds and you say it's more like 50 and you look at yourself after you've been on TV and you're like oh you never like the way you look and I it's I think it's hard for people to understand. I mean, Carol, you have a taste of this now, being on yep. television, how painful it can be mm -hmm. to be on TV. I never watch myself afterwards, yeah, though. Yeah, it's tough. Because for that reason, it's like, I, you know, unless, unless, you know, there was really stuff in my teeth, I do not want to see what I look yeah. like. It's true, though, right? I mean, it's I mean, easy people, to be critical. People pay attention to the visuals, especially when it's themselves. I mean, they look at what they don't like about themselves, and they think this is what everyone else is picking out. And that's, that's not the case, but it's hard to convince yourself 
that it's not the case. Mm -hmm. I what? think that was funny the way you say that in your book that that no one's really looking at you in those ways anyway, and so we have to stop looking at ourselves in right. those ways. I like the bike story though too. The chapter the well, getting the that's because of you guys. I came up here, <laughs> and one of the things that I was thinking about doing on my bucket list was to learn to ride a bike, and I I hadn't been on a bike since I was a kid. So in my head, I kept thinking, are people gonna think Queen lyrics when they see me on a bike? <laughs> so it made me anxious. But as I was coming home from Milwaukee, coming along the lakefront, your lakefront is spectacular. Oh, it's it beautiful. really is. Thank and you. there were so many people riding bikes, no helmets, don't know why. Yeah, Not well. my problem. I don't live here. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, that's we on, have that, hard heads. That's on you. That's on you. But I saw so many people on bikes of all sizes, of all ages, like in dresses, that it was really inspiring. So while my husband was talking and driving, I was online ordering okay a three-wheeled bike because I was <laughs> concerned and there's about a picture balance the and there's a picture I did eventually graduate to two wheels like a big girl <laughs> good for you good for you yeah I would start with three wheels too I so think is there anything left on your bucket list that you didn't do on, the, on this or well, you know I did not learn anything about self-defense I mean except for you know saying in Italian that I had a gun <laughs> so that's one of the things we're going to be doing at my event tonight Excellent. that's great tell us yeah. a little bit about your events and, and highlighting these elements every every event I've done on this tour so far we have highlighted a bucket list element a lot of them have been with wine tasting and learning about Italian food people have really liked those <laughs> one was about running a 5k everyone was mad right, um, yeah. but tonight we're gonna be doing a bucket list challenge learning a little bit about self-defense at Boswell Book Company tonight and it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah it's awesome for people to meet you especially fans of your books on, on the weight loss topic um, you talk about um, seeing a nutritionist as well mm -hmm. as a, a therapist a food kind of getting to the psychology uh, of food w what do you think was key to you in your weight loss journey and in, in, in making it happen there were a lot of little factors that went into it I think the biggest factor is um, we really twofold what I learned from Michelle at the fat .com, who I just adore is to take what's scary about food away if you want something you should have it her thing is not about weight loss her thing is about getting you comfortable with food you can't just to sit in your house and hear the cheesecake. I mean, yep. you have to know, I, yeah, I can have some of the cheesecake if I want it because that takes away its siren so song. But by working with an emotional eating therapist, I learned what triggered me. So between the two of them, I came up with an approach that to me is groundbreaking, but maybe then people already know this. I thought I would never go to Nordstrom and buy everything in the store because there would be consequences. Why was I doing that with my body with food? There were consequences. Now I know I'm very diligent about tracking things, about tracking my exercise, and I know now that I can have anything I want, I just have to work for it. I think that's I like great that. advice. It's wonderful advice. And and I think your tone is probably my favorite thing, both live and in the Thank book. You. Um, I'd like to take a trip with you. Yeah. Oh, that, that would be fun. Too. Sign us up, Jen. Yeah. I like it. And you can meet her tonight if you go to Boswell Book Company on Downer. You can talk, too, about her bucket list challenge. You're going to learn a little self-defense tonight if you go and visit. You can visit JenLancaster.com. That's her website. The book, again, is I Regret Nothing. And the um, event tonight is at seven o'clock. Always great to see you. Come it's back. Good to Wonderful. see you. Anytime you. you want. Happy Love healing. It. Thank yeah. you. Yeah.